So as you can see, I have my brand new one grinder all set up and put together. I got it over here on my bench next to my lathe, which is gonna be the perfect spot for it. So now we're gonna build a Wolverine sharpening system. And if you don't know what a Wolverine sharpening system is, I'll put a picture of it on the screen there, but it's basically a long arm and your tool will sit into that long arm that is adjustable and you can basically just rotate the tool and sharpen the tool. It's a super, super cool system and it's like a hundred bucks if you wanna buy one. So we're just gonna make a simple one today and I think it's gonna turn out pretty cool. Probably the most critical and most important important component of the Wolverine sharpening jig is the long arm that supports the tool. So for that I've got this really nice piece of scrap cherry. Cherry is very hard, very strong, so it's going to work really, really well for what we're going to use it for. Obviously it is way too big right now, so we're going to head over to the planer and start milling this down to its final size. And the final size of our Wolverine sharpening jig arm is going to be an inch by an inch and a half by about 36 inches long. So obviously you're going to want to make sure that your arm is thinner than the case that goes around your grinder wheel. So you can see mine's got plenty of clearance. You just want to make sure it's not going to be binding up or hitting because that'll just completely defeat the purpose of doing this. So now that we've got our arm done, we're going to start working on the piece that's going to hold the arm in place and that also locks it down. So it'll keep it from going left and right and keep it from going up and down. So the first step in making your little thing that's going to cover it is to have two little base pieces. So I planed down some walnut until it was just a little bit thicker than my cherry. You have to have a little bit of space there so that the cherry has a little bit of room to move and expand and contract with seasonal humidity. Then what I did is I took two little strips of paper, put them in there, and now I'm going to clamp this whole thing together and then screw on a top piece to hold everything in place. I am not going to put any screws down into the cherry. That needs to be able to slide. So I extended my arm out completely and what I'm doing right now is putting this little box in a position to where this arm is going to come out perfectly parallel with the wheel. And so once your grinder is where you want it, once your arm is perfect, go ahead and trace around this so you know where it is and then screw it down to the bench. So in addition to our big block back here, I added one more little support over here just to help support uh, the long arm when it's fully extended. So now we need to go over and make a little piece that will hold the back of the tool so that way it doesn't slip off the back. I'm gonna go draw something up on a block of wood and then we'll go cut it out on the bandsaw. So I've drawn this little V shape in a block of walnut. Now we're gonna go over to the bandsaw and cut this out. That's gonna give our tool a little place where it can sit. Alright, so this is the little piece that I came up with uh, to go on the back of our little slider arm here. I, uh, I chamfered the corners just to lighten up the look a little bit, and I have this little part on the bottom which will attach right to the back of our arm. It's also got this little notch here so the tool can sit into it. Now I can pre-drill some holes to screw it into place. Oh, 
I'll countersink those. Don't want to crank those down too tight or else I'll split the end. So before we go ahead and put the little thumb screw in the back to lock this arm down in place, I'll give you guys a little preview of what it's going to look like in action. So like I said, we have this little piece on the back screwed in. We will set the arm so that the angle of the tool is matching the angle of the grinder. So that way it's going to be grinding at the correct angle on the tool. We'll lock it down into place, turn on the grinder, and then we simply just rotate the tool like this and we get a perfect grind just like that. So, sorry guys for the bad camera angles, it's a little bit hard to film stuff kind of back here, but anyway, you, do, you guys just saw me install the little thumb screw, which we're going to use to tighten down our little arm here. Basically what it is, is I've used a compass to make a circle on a piece of walnut, drilled some little half holes, sanded it up, put a little piece of threaded rod down the middle, and now what you can do is tighten it up, and it's not going anywhere. I mean, I can move my entire bench, and this thing's not going anywhere. Loosen it up a little bit, and you can slide this thing back and forth. So it's going to be a really, really effective solution for tightening down our bar. So guys, now that our little Wolverine sharpening system is completely finished, I'm going to demonstrate how you use it. So obviously, first you have to loosen the thumb screw. Then we're going to bring in the arm until the tool starts to hit the wheel. Now, it may be a little bit difficult for you guys to see what's going to happen here, uh, but we want to slowly bring the arm in and out until the wheel is hitting perfectly on the existing angle on the tool. So you don't want it to be up like this, and you don't want it to be down like this with a gap underneath. You want the wheel to be perfectly in line with the angle of the tool. And another way you can do that is to get down on the side and look this direction and see if you can see light coming through the little gap between the tool and the wheel. If you can see light, then you have to adjust it. If you can't see any light, then it's perfect. Then, once you've got the arm in the position that you want, you can just quickly tighten down the little thumb screw back there, and you're in business. And by no means am I a good sharpener on this Wolverine system. I've actually used the real Wolverine system a few times. Uh, I've only recently started using my homemade one. I just finished it an hour ago. So, for the parting tool, I like to put it right in the middle and slowly go left and right. Now, for something like a bull gouge, you would want to turn the, turn the grinder on and then rotate it like this. And that way, it'll start to sharpen up the sides and round over the tip. But for the parting tool, you don't want that. You just want a straight, blunt edge on the top. So you're just going to hold it and do this. Now, the more accurately you can get that wheel in line with the angle on the tool, the quicker your sharpening is going to go, and the less material you're going to have to remove. I have a lot of practice to do with that system. I've, like I said, I've only used it a couple of times, and by no means am I a good sharpener. In fact, I'm not great. So, if you guys have any tips for me, definitely leave those down in the comments section below. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I've got some really cool content coming up, but you're not going to want to miss it. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I post a new video. And if you don't know, guys, I'm actually doing a raffle for a really, really nice walnut bowl on my website right now. Tickets are $5 a piece, and it'll be the very first link in the description box down below. It'll take you right to my website where you can purchase tickets. All of the proceeds from the tickets go toward me buying a brand new saw stop table saw. Super excited about that, and I want to say a big thank you to everybody that has already bought in tickets. Definitely be sure to follow me on Instagram, guys, Seth Custom Creations. I'll put the name on the screen there for you. I've got a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff and stuff that doesn't get put up on my YouTube channel over on my Instagram. I'll see you guys next week.